Morning, Michael. Thank you very much for the introduction. Hey, listen, uh, everybody. Thank you very much for taking the time to uh, attend this call. It's very important to us. We, we have a lot to talk about today. I uh, wanted to highlight a couple of things real quickly. Uh, 2019, Bosch was ADI's Vendor of the Year. We're very proud of that. Um, and part of the reason we attained that, uh, that, that position with ADI was because uh, over the last several years, we've been slowly but surely opening up numerous product lines and lots and lots of wonderful products to, uh, to be talked about, to be sold, and to be acquired through ADI. One of them is our uh, fire systems, uh, so our 7024 and several of uh, the accessories that go along with that. We just recently opened that up to ADI here this year and uh, wanted to take an opportunity to let Chris Myers, who's uh, on the call with us here today, uh, to go through a complete line, uh, a complete setup of our life safety stuff and talk a little bit about not only uh, cameras and, 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 and panels and stuff like that, but just to give you an overview of what Bosch has for life safety systems. With that, Chris Myers, I'd like to turn it over to you, sir. Thank you. Much appreciated, Ron. Um, and just wanted to let everybody know, um, from a standpoint with Bosch and ADI, we are loving the relationship that we have with ADI right now. Uh, they've been very generous with uh, allowing us to come in and, and not only teach some of their staff, but you know discuss the, the potential that we really have with this relationship. So super, super excited to work with ADI and, and get the opportunity like these to you know address the North America UL portfolio here for, uh, for Bosch. And uh, we'll start off. As Ron stated, my name is Christopher Myers. I'm the regional marketing manager for our UL portfolio here in North America. Um, I've been with Bosch for about six years, uh, three years in this particular role in the, man in the marketing role, as well as three years uh, where I was on our inside sales team. So I'm very familiar with the process as well as um, the portfolio of fire, but even our other portfolios like intrusion access and, and video products, which, you know, we'll talk about a little bit more. And, and the one key, I think that everybody always wants to be sure to hear is that, you know, the integration and, and how we all kind of work together and, and overlap with one another. And uh, my information's here on the bottom left. So if anybody needs to contact me, certainly feel free to email me at any time or, uh, or contact me. That's uh, our local Fairport number. Uh, and that'll come right into uh, to my desk, which uh, as of recently has been my couch. So uh, it's comfortable, but uh, we're certainly making the opportunities uh, available like this and, and uh, hopefully reaching a lot more people. So uh, basics of life safety systems. Let's get right into it. So with dealing with ADI and this new relationship, we want to talk about this space in particular. Uh, when you look at kind of this triangle here of what types of applications are out there for fire alarm panels, you know, where we're really going to be focusing is on the ready to use applications and small applications. So these are kind of your basic to, to standard style applications, not getting into the, the larger mid-sized to complex complex applications, which may have uh, voice evacuation and, and things like that. So these will be uh, hopefully easier to use, easier to understand, and easy to train on equipment and pieces that uh, hopefully you'll like and enjoy and uh, be able to make some money with in the uh, recent or, or, or upcoming future. Now, a fire alarm control panel, we're going to be kind of discussing, you know, differences and in, in, in feature sets and things like that. So, you know, first we always start with when you want to make a decision on, on what control panel to utilize, kind of know first what a control panel does. So that's really the, the heart of or the mastermind of the alarm system. So uh, that really is, is getting everything on that panel to communicate with one another and uh, monitor the health and function of what's going on in, in that uh, application or that system that you have. Now, the first thing when you walk into an ADI location, you know, how are you going to differentiate one panel from the other? Well, out of the box, a lot of people look at size. So when you're looking at a very simple conventional style 
control panel, you're going to look at how many zones does it have. And a zone is used on this conventional alarm panel, which allows uh, basically a circuit of conventional devices. Typically, it would be smoke detectors or manual stations. Um, and it's something that you're not going to connect in with sounders or strobes. Uh, on the Bosch fire panel, let's talk about that. Out of the box, it'll give you four powered conventional zones, and we'll talk about the uh, expandability of that up to eight zones. Each of those zones, you can have up to 20 detectors. Uh, the identification of alarm is based on the zone, not based on that device. And uh, we will talk about some of the conventional detectors that Bosch has for uh, this 7024 panel. Now, as we talked about briefly before, a conventional fire alarm panel is used for smaller applications. And those applications are going to be maybe uh, motel, hotel, banks, um, you know, smaller locations that um, these zones that you have set up are going to be um, basically covering large rooms or large sections of, of buildings, okay? Now, detector wiring. So on a conventional unit, you have two or four wire uh, wiring. Uh, two wire would be you know, powered from the circuitry of the control panel. Uh, what it does, it would um, send an electrical short to the panel. Uh, that short would then trigger uh, the system to send an alarm. Um, you must make sure the control panel is compatible with any two wire system. Uh, and then on a four wire, you'd be using separate wires um, for power and for triggering the alarm. So uh, the wires for the alarm would have a separate end of, um, end of line relay uh, that would trigger that alarm. Uh, and they could also self-activate. So uh, basically the difference between say a two or a four wire design. Um, you have initiating devices, which are you know, smoke detectors, heat detectors, duct detectors, flame and your pull station, water flow monitors. So all these are, are conventional style devices that could be on one of those uh, zones uh, up to again, four out of the box. Um, the types of detectors that there are, you have your photoelectric smoke detectors or your ionization smoke detectors, which uh, ionization are kind of a thing of the past. Photoelectric are going to be better against, uh, against smoldering or, or slower moving fires. Um, so what, it's just gonna be better for um, false alarm, basically immunity. And features that you might see in, in smoke detectors uh, from a Bosch standpoint, you know, you have chamber check self-diagnostics, uh, certain compensation effects for when uh, dust buildup happens within a chamber. Uh, but the one specifically I want to focus on would be the chamber made, which is uh, a unique cleaning mechanism for our uh, two-piece design here. So just take uh, that top right off. So again, it's just a, a, a snap in design. So once you snap that out, take a, a nozzle from uh, canned air, slide that right in there, Quick, uh, quick little press on that, short blast, and uh, you're gonna be able to clean out that. Uh, so from a maintenance standpoint, uh, very, very effective. One against, again, uh, false alarms in the future, uh, because you know that your device is gonna be clean, uh, but also it's going to be a lot less time cleaning these out um, than you know, having to do it with either a one-piece design or, or having to take uh, apart multiple things. Uh, the conventional detectors that uh, you know Bosch has again our F220 series would probably be uh, our most popular uh, conventional detector here, uh, which comes in two and four wire base options. Uh, the optional CO sensor, uh, heat sensors are available for those, uh, and have all the feature sets that we talked about uh, previously. Uh, we have the FCP 500. Uh, which is our flush mount smoke detectors. I'll talk more about that in just a second. Uh, and one thing to uh, certainly 
think about is uh, with this new relationship with ADI, we constantly have uh, promotions that are happening within these locations. So uh, certainly check in with your local rep, whether it be your, your local Bosch rep or, or your local ADI location, and, and they'll tell you about these promotions that are going on. Uh, I know Ron is doing a fantastic job uh, discussing with ADI some of these great promotions that we're having month in and month out. Uh, and some that are currently going on right now. So if it's something that uh, you want to know about, we can get that information out to you as well. Uh, we do also have the D263 and D273, which uh, slightly older designs are one-piece designs, uh, one for a two-wire application and the other for a four-wire application. Uh, option bus uh, applications here, so keypads, enunciators, and, and other accessories that you have on there. Uh, the FPD7024 will certainly have uh, a full portfolio of all option bus options here uh, from, uh, again, a keypad where you can do RPS programming from the keypad or, you know, checking uh, the system itself with uh, your enunciators that you have. Uh, we have enunciators that'll uh, show what's going on in all eight zone options, even if you use the expansion module, which is the uh, 7034 uh, expansion module to go from four to eight conventional zones. Now, what's really nice about the 7024, and I think what will set this particular panel apart from a lot of the other conventional style panels that are on the shelf within an ADI location, is the FPD7024 is a hybrid style panel. Um, it does offer addressable technology, uh, so this expandable nature with just simply the addition of the FPE 7039 module, and that's just a snap-in module to the control panel, so really easy to use. Uh, the addressable technology will give you a loop, so used again in an addressable fire alarm panel. It's a circuit of addressable devices, and the big thing is those peripherals that go around in that loop now are going to, you're going to know specifically where that alarm is coming from. So every device that is connected to that loop has its own unique address. So if that fire is detected, you're going to know specifically where that alarm is going from. As you can see, the 7039 snap in right to the control panel here. And this is some of the Musk, MUX bus um, items that we have for uh, addressable features here. So our, our MUX poles, um, you know, point modules, our smoke detectors, bases, as well as um, input modules. Also on this con particular control panel, you have your NAC circuit. So uh, again, a notification circuit is to, you know, let people know um, that there's an emergency that's occurring. Um, you'll be notified either by a horn, strobe, chime, bell, speaker, uh, and that is a circuit. So it's a, a loop that is carrying these notification appliances. Um, these notification appliances here, uh, we work with, you know, the three main uh, NAC manufacturers, which would be your Gentech system sensor and wheel lock. Uh, we have all the uh, different flavors that would be available, whether it be wall or ceiling, horn or strobe or combination, waterproof options, uh, low, low current or multi-candela, uh, and the sync protocols are also embedded into uh, the panel as well. So uh, whether, uh, and the patterns themselves. So um, again, temporal three, uh, you know, all your, all your normal uh, sync protocols are, are there. Uh, communication from the panel. Uh, as we know, or, or if you know fire systems at all, um, the, the talk of, you know, getting away from phone lines has, has been a conversation, I think, for a long time. Um, so Bosch wanted to make sure that the availability for communication outside of that phone line that's, in, that's out of the box on that panel uh, is available. So with the uh, module B426, 
or the module B450 and B444 for a Verizon option, or we also do have an AT&T option. We give the, the IP and cellular options to communicate uh, off of that panel, which is uh, extremely important, uh, especially now from the standpoint uh, from cellular, where if you're doing, say, intrusion products and using cellular, you're doing fire products and using cellular, all these connections that you have with Bosch, you're able to, uh, one, contact our our uh, specific department, our, our cellular services department, they'll work with you through not only the connections of those, but any of the troubleshooting that happens uh, with these cellular connections. And then also discuss with you the options of pricing, as well as the discussions about how, um, if you have multiple cellular uh, connections within Bosch, you can uh, share some of those as well too. So if you're sharing data that allows you to uh, kind of save some money in the long haul uh, because you're able to say utilize um, other connections data uh, for other, other connections. Uh, again, another communication you have is just our typical DACT. Uh, you know, you have your five input points, uh, supports multiple reporting formats here. So uh, you got that dual phone line interface that's available uh, for you as well there. Uh, additional power um, that, that you might need, say, for, you know, NAC devices, things like that. Uh, again, this connects, our, our RNAC would connect to the options bus of this here and would also display status, uh, maximum of four RNACs per control panel via that option bus. So you basically can add up to 16 notification circuits and, you know, certainly add some of that uh, additional power availability there. And uh, you'll do, uh, you know, on our website, we have, you know, power calculations, things like that. Uh, so you, you'll know either through these calculations or, you know, possibly possibly through, um, you know, talking with, uh, say, our tech support team, uh, what you might need from a, a power consumption standpoint. Uh, to kind of put all this together, uh, we utilize remote programming software. Uh, program can be done from the keypad of the panel, uh, and it also can be done here while remote programming software. Uh, the RPS software is similar to our intrusion-based software. So if you're familiar with our, our G-series or B-series uh, intrusion panels, uh, it is a very similar uh, program. So uh, that's kind of definitely a, a benefit. So if you're somebody that wants to say maybe add fire to an already intrusion portfolio that, that you utilize, um, you know, there's not going to be much more additional training uh, that you'd need to go through. Basically just uh, normal, uh, you know, kind of fire training. Just wanted to show you kind of the, the menu tree here. Um, that would be uh, a part of that. So something that uh, once you start to utilize something like this that you'd be familiar with. Uh, again, we won't go into too much of that because again, that's I think for a later training. You just wanna kind of give you an overview on what you might see as you uh, go along that path. And putting it all together. So if you're kind of looking at a full system diagram, um, this is what the FPD7024 would look like and, and some of the flavors that would be available for that. So this is certainly what you'd want to look at or what you would see on the shelves at, at ADI. Um, and you'd be able to ask, you know, as many questions as you as you would want. Uh, we have updated the ADI training staff with, uh, with this presentation as well. So they should know about this product. So even internally, you'd have somebody to go to as opposed to say a Bosch contact as well. Um, so in general, again, how do you choose a control panel? So you walked in the door for the first time, you know, you wanna look at a few different things. Uh, Design and construction should comply with all the relevant industry codes and standards. Uh, just simply by going to any manufacturer's website, going to the product page of, say, for Bosch, the FPD7024, you'll see the UL, ULC or, or whatever standards or certifications that we've had on these products. So certainly UL is, is probably going to be the main one that you'd want to go look at. Um, 
in certain cases, you might want to look at FM for insurance purposes. Uh, so how, whatever the AHJ or whoever's kind of deciding on these uh, should certainly let you know what you need to be looking for. Uh, dimensions of quality, such as designing for safety, reliability, serviceability, uh, maintaining testability, uh, and really operator friendliness. And, and really what that says in a nutshell is total cost of ownership. So, uh, you know, looking at the design, is it easy to use? Can you use the, um, can you install this easily? Uh, you know, things like that. Uh, ergonomic aspects of the design, better placements of buttons. Uh, so, you know, we've certainly done redesigns on this particular product to, to hopefully make that display uh, as easy to use as possible. And then just simply reputation of product quality. Um, you know, Bosch is, is known um, of, you know, having a hundred years of, um, of experience in, in the fire alarm industry sector. So, you know, we go back a long ways and, and if you look across both fire intrusion, access, video, communication, you know, Bosch is typically known with having quality products and we stand by those products uh, from a warranty standpoint as well. So, so differentiators and, uh, you know, some of the codes and standards that you really want to be looking for. So uh, differentiators, as I just discussed there, false alarm immunity. So uh, our F220 series, uh, you know, has the additional carbon monoxide detections that, that, that complements that. It's not true CO, um, but what you're looking at is the CO determines the viability of a fire, heat confirms the presence of a fire, and the photoelectric detection chamber determines the presence of smoke. So all these things and all these design feature sets that Bosch has with our conventional feet or conventional smoke detectors like the F220 and, and even the FPC-500 uh, invisible smoke, uh, these are all unique things and these are all mitigating false alarms, which is essentially what we want to do at the end of the day. Ease of operation. Uh, so again, readability of the design, um, layout. Uh, if, if you look at the, the keypad itself, uh, raised you know, raised letters or, or raised buttons on there. So it's, you know, easy to use even with, uh, if you had a glove or something like that on as well too. And then education and support. So uh, it's very important if you choose to go with a specific manufacturer, especially Bosch in this particular case, you know, how are you gonna be supported if you do have a question? Um, and these are some of the things that, that we want to have available and already do have available. Uh, we currently have recently redesigned our web-based training. Uh, so if you go to our website, us.boshsecurity.com, go to the support tab, you'll see the uh, web-based training options. Uh, once you go through the fire alarm systems, you'll see that we have one for the FPD 7024, uh, one for our Aviotech camera, which is a flame and smoke detection camera, then also for our FPA. 1000, which is a, a larger panel that uh, is not available currently through distribution, only available uh, with our uh, direct dealers. Um, you'll also see uh, support material out there, as I talked about, data sheets, brochures, selection guides. Um, to prepare for this relationship with ADI, uh, the great thing I think that Bosch did was uh, designing a lot of material to make things easier for walk-in traffic as well for ADI employees. We created some Marcom material which showcase uh, how to sell certain products, what differentiators that we have. Uh, we have uh, a, a new sleeve that's on the uh, box of the panel itself which gives you uh, an overview of uh, what that panel gives you out of the box, as well as on the back, uh, a compatibility chart. Uh, so some of the other popular products that you would go with for simple applications. Um, and then we, we've also you know, worked with inside sales at ADI, as well as working with the training team, as I said before, to hopefully keep them up to speed on, on our product and some of the things that we're doing with these products. So if you have questions, you not only have support internally from ADI, but you'd also have support internally from Bosch. So we both love to help you and we want to make sure that your experience with Bosch is, um, is great. And just simply put, uh, also 
you know, listings on data sheets, proof of concept video support, which uh, we currently have for our AvioTech camera, as well as some basic videos for the 7024. Uh, and then making it easier for our incoming traffic, if you want to utilize the 7024, we've recently taken off any restriction to purchase that panel. So let me repeat that one more time. We've taken off any restriction that we have to purchase that panel within an ADI location. So no web-based trainings, no classroom support or anything like that. You're able, we think it's simple enough. We'd certainly recommend uh, going through some of those trainings uh, because you're only, your experience is only get, going to get better if you have prior education on that product. Um, but if you have any experience in the fire world, uh, we certainly think that it would be uh, an easy solution switch over to, to the 7024 panel. Uh, this is some of the marketing material that we did come up with. And on the right-hand side, uh, far right-hand side, that is the sleeve that you would see in one of these locations. Uh, so you'd have your part numbers on there. So you don't even have to ask the questions about what's even the part number that I'm supposed to pick up. So um, this is, you know, myself and, and our marketing team did a phenomenal job with coming out uh, with, with some of these marketing material pieces. And we're just trying to make it as easy as possible for you to walk in and walk out of a location, understanding uh, what you may need to purchase. And if you're brand new uh, to the fire world and uh, you've never kind of dealt with uh, strict regulations and, and standards. Uh, I kind of wanted to just go over very, very quickly who you should probably talk to and, and engage if this is something that you're gonna say, add to your repertoire or, or your portfolio. Um, you you wanna get in uh, up to speed with any UL, ULC, CSFM, New York City requirements. So those are, you know, regional, state, or, or um, countrywide, uh, specifications. Um, again, additionally, talk to, to really any state or, or local AHJ uh, authority having jurisdiction that's in your area, and they'll certainly keep you up to speed on anything that you should be up to speed with. Um, they're the ones that are, are at the end of the day going to say yes or no for any installation um, that you have going on. So uh, they're the end all be all, so they should become your, your best friend at the end of the day. Uh, again, you have in installation specifics, codes of practices. Uh, these are all regulations that you need to know about. Specifically, everything kind of goes up to NFPA uh, and your, your NFPA 101 life safety codes, getting into specifics, UL 268 for smoke detectors, 864 uh, general standards. So uh, again, some of these things are are. Uh, certainly codes and regulations that you want to keep up to speed with. They're updated every few years um, and even getting to the point where if you wanted to get on committees or be involved with this, uh, you can go to those links. Um, attending NFPA uh, shows every year or getting involved with committees, I think is, is a fantastic thing as well too, because it's only going to kind of immerse yourself in, in more of this uh, regulation and standards and it's, um, it can get pretty specific and it can, it can get overwhelming. So having friends in the industry and, and having people that you know that you can go to about questions, uh, I think is, is, is extremely important. And that's why, again, I said, uh, certainly have those conversations with your authority having jurisdictions out there and, and make sure that you have a great relationship with them because you know, they can always point you in the right directions if you do have questions on these types of things. Um, Speaking of staying up to date on, on certain code changes, um, something should have gone through this year, but um, was actually pushed further out. Uh, UL 864, um, a, a newer standard here, newer test that's out there. Uh, the, the burger test or, or nuisance test for, for smoke detectors here on UL 268. Uh, it, it allowed, it basically means that um, the polyurethane foam test um, if, if you false alarmed in a, in a specific test, um, you basically didn't pass this regulation. And um, this specific regulation was supposed to go into play um, probably about a month ago. 
and uh, it's actually been pushed back to July 1st of 2021 because so many manufacturers had difficulty uh, passing this particular test. So you can see that certain standards and regulations are not easy to, uh, to get to and, and always adhere to. So uh, make sure that you're up to speed with the stuff and knowing what's uh, maybe coming out in the future as well. So just uh, journals, things like that, you know, you know, NFPA.org is always a great place to go and just seeing some of the trends that are going on in the industry um, you know, you're always going to have places to go to to, to kind of read up on this stuff. Um, so outside of standard um, conventional detection, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk kind of briefly, because if, if you looked at the uh, full system display, uh, there was a camera that was on there, and that's our, our Aviotech um, video fire detection camera. So while smoke detectors remain a vital component uh, in, in almost all scenarios, there are certain envir environments that could uh, help from additional protection. And uh, that is our Aviotech camera. So again, what is Aviotech? It's a video-based fire detection uh, that is used from a supplemental standpoint. Uh, on the bottom right-hand side, I do wanna highlight something. Supplemental and project-based only. This is not an item that uh, is sold out of ADI currently. Uh, we do talk to people about projects, and if the project is right, we will talk about maybe things possibly going out of uh, certain locations. Again, it's project-based, so we need to be comfortable with uh, selling something like that before we would ever be okay with, say, taking uh, off the um, current block that we have on it right now. So, but it, again, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about it. So the bottom left-hand picture that I have here is uh, a fantastic picture because there's always environments, like we said in the, in the quote previously, that traditional smoke detection just is not going to work. So um, stratification, so in environments where you, know, you have heat pockets, smoke may not always raise to a ceiling. Uh, so detection at the source would be important. Uh, Aviotech will look at both flame and smoke separately and within seconds can determine in uh, these types of environments whether or not you have uh, a specific alarm and it's based on again core color flickering shape motion uh, of smoke constant direction and speed and, and upwards motion so uh, again the algorithm that is built directly into that camera so at the source uh, is going to be able to constantly detect these things in that view used for uh, a lot of different verticals transportation industrial warehouses uh, single machines large uh, locations or you know say maybe a, a distribution center where uh, or even retail locations where arson might be possible and just always remember that you can utilize your IVA function so again these standard analytics and they run in parallel with the flame and smoke detection. So you can do people counter and if somebody goes into this box or out of this box or over this line, all that stuff can be done in parallel with the flame and smoke detection. So it's again, uh, Bosch coming out with another hybrid style device. And what's the benefit to you? Fast detection, robust intelligence, because again, that software or that, that analytics that's uh, at the source can be uh, updated just simply by uh, software updates through the camera. If we do come out with something like, for instance, recently we did a twilight update, which allowed um, illumination to go all the way down to two lux, and we would still be able to see uh, smoke and flame uh, in that scene. Um, and you'd also have cost savings. So again, uh, it's always total cost of ownership with Bosch and, and how we wanna um, portray our products. Um, you know, in, in the case where if a machine goes down or, or you're not able to produce uh, for a lengthy period of time, it's certainly going to cost anybody money. Uh, downtime is bad. Uh, we offer products that are going to be able to hopefully stop uh, things like that from happening. Now, uh, who should you contact? So if you do have questions, uh, you certainly have myself to contact. Um, I had my, my information number and email address on that first site. Uh, we have our SIS group or, or sales district managers or uh, however you wanna call them, basically our, our outside reps that are available um, 
and, and their information is here on the side with um, all their, their phone and email. Uh, this I can obviously send out if, if this information is needed later on. I, I at least wanted to put something up here. So if you kind of can look quick, you might be able to jot a name down and, and an email if you do have a very specific question. Certainly, we always love to have you just contact uh, your local ADI branch. They hopefully have a great relationship with uh, this particular person and, and um you know, know about, you know, promotions, as I said, that are going on and, and or even how you can get in contact with this person as well. So I, I would certainly suggest contacting your local ADI branch first. Um, if you don't want to contact, say, um, our Bosch outside rep, if you have not contacted or talked to him or her uh, previously and are just maybe uncomfortable with uh, making that initial call. So, but uh, also, go right to our website. Uh, again, our support tab will give you numbers for our pre-sales department, our customer service department, tech support staff, repair and exchange, even our credit department. Um, probably won't need our credit department if you're buying something through distribution. You'd be dealing with ADI. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, we want that relationship to grow from a distribution standpoint. So uh, if anything grows from a, a direct standpoint in the future, we could always discuss that. But we certainly don't want to ruin the relationship that we'd have with ADI by trying to steal customers from them. So as we continue, uh, just the, the link to the website here. So at this time, uh, I just want to, again, thank everybody for giving me this opportunity to talk about Bosch products and, and our uh, peripherals that, that go with our FPD7024 uh, conventional and addressable style fire alarm panel. Uh, what I'm going to do is hand it off over to Larry Borghese, and um, he can kind of facilitate uh, just the questions at the end, he's certainly going to talk about some things for a minute and, and address some things with you guys. So uh, we'll go through that and then we'll get into questions. So Larry, all you. All right. Thank you. Can you hear me up there? Can. Yes, we hear you. Yep. Okay, great. Well, thanks. Uh, so what I'd like to do is uh, I'm responsible for learning and development over at ADI. And I wanted to share with everyone a new service uh, that ADI is going to be offering. It's called ADI Academy. Uh, ADI Academy is our new online learning portal. It was uh, recently introduced in May uh, for our customers. And so on, on our ADI Academy, we'll have courses on access control, um, IP video, networking, cybersecurity, and, and other areas as well. And we're continuing to add to this actually we're probably going to be adding another 50 to 100 courses over the next 30 days. Um, and so what I wanted to do is share with you um, is that uh, many of these courses do carry continuing education units or CEUs. Uh, you'd have to check with each specific course as to what state or organization that they might apply to. Uh, but we're currently offering a, a free 60-day trial to ADI Academy. Bundle will be available to you. So, for example, we have three bundles um, that you can select from for this free trial access to control, IP networking, and IP video. Uh, each of these bundles carries anywhere from five to nine different courses, each about an hour length, and again, carrying five to nine CEUs along with them. So, you can certainly pick this up and, uh, you know, get familiar with it. And then we also will offer a free subscription. Uh, to the entire course catalog um, for $250. That's for the entire course. And that could be upwards of 150 uh, course content hours. So uh, to get to uh, ADI Academy, uh, just simply go to adiglobalacademy.com. And once you get there, uh, what you need to do is register for the ADI Academy. There's a link up in the upper right corner. Uh, you click, you fill out the necessary information. This is a separate registration uh, than the ADI website for the time being. At some point in the future, we'll probably make it one and the same. Uh, so that if you're on our website, you can also access your ADI Academy account as well. Um, all right, that's, that's really all I wanted to share. Uh, just again, give you some insights in terms of a new service that uh, ADI Global uh, has, is now providing. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over back to Michael Mastin. Uh, he'll he'll uh, facilitate the Q&A session. Mike? 